Okay, so now one of the one of the numeral systems that that we use essentially is called the Hindu Arabic numeral system, which is essentially um, well. First of all, I have to I have to tell you what I actually what 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 I actually mean by by the Hindu Arabic numeral system because there is a whole lot of ambiguity in this article on Wikipedia meaning that things are not defined properly and so one word is used for to mean something else and then again the same word is used to mean something else so you just get confused right then no essentially technically speaking a numeral system refers to only the basically to only the the the, um, the digits or essentially the characters that you use in order to write a number then the number can be in any system. For example, it could be in the decimal number system, it could be in the octal number system, it could be in the hexadecimal number system, it could be in the binary number system, or even or even it could be, for example, in the way that Romans used to write numbers. Now, essentially, the, the, the way that Romans used to write their numbers is not is not the way that we write our numbers today meaning that um, meaning that basically that 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 um, essentially in a in in the in the roman system essentially you have a you have some numerals for example this represents a, a one this represents a five a ten a fifty a hundred a five hundred and a thousand right but then uh, you have to add and subtract these from one another to get based on some rules in order to represent your numbers for example a three would be three of these characters put together there is no position value in the in the in the way that they write their numbers but still they have their own numerals meaning that these characters over here you can call them their numerals but then the number system itself is not a positional number system like the not not like for example the, the decimal number system in which there is the first position the second position the position zero one two three and so on and so forth right so in positional number systems for example in the decimal number system the first position is for example the the ones place value then the tens place value then the hundreds place value then the thousands place value, and so on and so in the in the way that Romans write their numbers, there is no position in the number system. And but the numerals also they do exist still, of course, because without the numerals you cannot write any numbers in any system really. So the way that essentially Romans write their numbers is that they have essentially these characters like like for example the the one. And they have the five, which is like this. And then they have the the ten, which is like an X. Then they have the fifty, which is like an L. Then they have this essentially the 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 hundred. Then they have the the five hundred, which is like a D. And then they have the the the, the thousand. So this is the one. This is the five. The X is the ten. For example, the L is a fifty. The um, the um, basically the c is a is a, is a hundred the d is a five hundred and the m is a one thousand right and then you have to add and subtract these from one another and then as i mentioned the position actually does not exist it's not a positional number system so for example for a three you have to use three of these together that becomes a three but then based on the rules of the, the based on the ways that they they actually write their numbers you cannot put four of them together meaning this would not be acceptable of course for example this was acceptable a long time ago but now this this is not the norm anymore nobody does this this type of thing anymore sometimes on the face of some clocks or some some spe specific places you might see a four like this otherwise normally you wouldn't do this anymore now if you want to write a four for example you would have to use a five and then subtract the one 
right that becomes a four if you want to write a five you just simply use one of these if you want to write a six for example you have to use a five and then add one to it so this way you are subtracting a one this way you are adding a one meaning putting the one on the left hand side subtracts the the one from the from the five and then you left you're left with the four when you put the one on the right hand side you are adding the one to the five which means that then you will be left with the six right and then you have to do the, the exact same thing for example with essentially any number that you want to write you have to essentially put these somehow together to to to, to essentially to to make your number right so in this number system essentially what happens is that the numerals are still there so these are essentially all are your numerals but then the the number system is not the positional number system right now so in the discussion that we have here basically the when we talk about the hindu arabic numeral system the numeral system is actually something which is independent of the number system that it is used in for example the, the the characters that you use in this in this in the hindu arabic numeral system which are essentially nothing but for example these characters or for example these characters even or even or even essentially you could or let's 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 keep it simple let's let's say that you can use essentially either these characters or these characters these can these are essentially independent of the number system that they that they are used for that number system is a different thing in and of itself meaning that the same characters can be used in the decimal number system in the octal number system in the hexadecimal number system and so on and so forth so this hopefully clarifies any doubt that might come up while we are going through this text now the way that the the hindu arabic numeral system or the indo arabic numeral system or the hindu numeral system or the arabic numeral system has been described it's been described along with the number system that that that, that it comes with meaning um, they have they have they have essentially described it as a as a complete number system which is a positional base 10 number system meaning a position base 10 meaning that there is the post meaning that there is the different place values the, the ones place value the tens the hundreds thousands and so on and so forth and um, of course it's positional because there is these different positions and the base is 10. we can consider it this way as well although technically you should not do this meaning the as long as you're talking about a numeral system you should keep it at the numeral system but then in this article it's been talked about this way now this numeral system is supposed to be able to represent integers integers you know what they are they are essentially one two three four negative one negative two negative three including zero right and then the extensions to non-integers is the decimal num numeral system so um, uh, basically the, the the same system has been extended and now they have added some sort of decimal point and then after the decimal point you you, you can have essentially uh, the, the, you can have essentially decimal values or essentially decimal digits and that essentially would be the decimal numeral system which is presently uh, the most commonly numeral system um, now the system was invented between now again over here essentially there is all kinds of ambiguity so essentially all that i'm talking about in this video you have to just take it as a i mean don't take anything that i'm saying in this video as a definition or anything it's just some general information uh, and that's important because uh, later on we want to talk about the, the, the roman numeral so this is something that would be nice to know of course now this system 
the Hindu Arabic numeral system was invented between the first and fourth centuries by Indian mathematicians, right? So between the fourth and the, between the first and fourth centuries, meaning around 1900 years ago, by Indian mathematicians, the system was was adopted. It was adopted in Arabic mathematics by the ninth century. So by the ninth century, the the system was taken by Arabic mathematicians. It became more widely known through the writings in Arabic of the of the Persian mathematician Al Khwarazmi and the Arab mathematician Al Kindi. And the system had spread to medieval Europe by high middle ages. So by by high middle ages the system had already spread to medieval Europe. Okay. Now these symbols these symbol sets can be divided into three main families now what they what what they mean by these symbol sets so essentially the symbol sets that are used in the hindu arabic numeral system there is um, there is essentially three of them one of them is the, called the western arabic numerals which is as you can see essentially the normal the the usual numerals that we use in the english language zero one two three four five all the way up to nine these are called the western arabic numerals then there is the eastern arabic numerals and these eastern arabic numerals are essentially these numerals over here which are used for example in arabic although the arabic technically is, is a different thing but it's been actually categorized under eastern arabic so you see zero one two three four five six seven eight nine in persian dari pashtu the same thing in urdu the same thing so these are essentially the eastern arabic numerals and then there is basically something called um, the um, there is something called the 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 indian numerals in various scripts using the indian subcontinent so the Indian numerals are basically these numerals over here. So for example, you see in Devanagari, which is the which is the script that is used in the Sanskrit language or in Hindi language. So they have their own, of course, they have their own in Devanagari, you have your own alphabets for the language, but then you have this these characters for numbers basically. Or essentially in Tamil, in I don't know, Gujarati, Telugu, or Orisha or Oriya, um, for example, is must be some place in the south of India, for example. This is the, the this is the script that is used in that language. There is, for example, I don't understand these languages, but there is Telugu, Kanara. These are in Malayam, Malayalam. That is essentially again some these are different languages in the south of india right so essentially then the the, the three categories or essentially that the symbols the, the, the symbol sets can be divided into these three main families the western arabic numerals the usual english numerals that we use the eastern arabic numerals which are for example the numerals that are used in persian language like this one two three four five not the english ones but the ones on the right six seven and so on and so forth and then there is the indian numerals that are used in various scripts in the in indian languages right so that's that's basically a little bit about the system now let's take a look at the origins as well okay so now about the origins of this of the hindu arabic numeral system so the the sentences here are a little bit sometimes complicated so we need to 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 break them down so sometime around 600 ce so around 600 ce 600 ce means ce means common era and so essentially when you say 600 ce that means 600 years after the birth of jesus christ that is the same thing as ad and um, so 
then 600c that means essentially if we are today we are in 2024 then that means around six, 1400 years ago so sometime around 600 CE, a change began in the writing of dates in the Brahmi derived scripts of India and Southeast Asia. So these scripts that were derived from the from the Brahmi from the Brahmi script, meaning essentially these different these different, for example, the Devanagari or Tamil or Telugu or Kanara and all of these things that we see. Some of them you cannot see because the they cannot be decoded on my on my computer. You need a you need essentially a specific code so that they can be rendered on your computer. So essentially, around 600 CE. <coughs> The dates that the dates that were written from these from these descendants of the Brahmi script, um, some change essentially happened in them, transforming from an additive system with separate numerals for numbers of different magnitudes to a positional place value system, meaning that originally they were used in an, in an additive system like like the like essentially the Roman system. In a Roman system, you have a you have an additive system, meaning that, for example, three of these you put together becomes a three, or for example, a five and a one you put together in a specific way becomes a four, in a different way it becomes a six, and so so that's essentially an additive system, meaning adding things together, or for example, a thirty would be three of these, for example, one, two, and three. This would be a 30. That's adding together. That's an additive system. So when this system was being used, the position system was still, for whatever reason, either it was not being used or they were, for whatever reason, they were not using it, right? What I mean to say is that either the position value was still not there or for whatever reason they were not still using it. They were still using the additive system. And this place value system, it essentially it um, had a single set of glyphs, meaning for example, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine, including zero, of the numerals that we use today in the English language and they used the dot for zero so gradually displacing the additive expressions of numerals over the following seven, se several centuries so over it, over several centuries the additive system by replaced by was was replaced by the positional system meaning then meaning that for example the decimal number system came into being and then and then essentially the the, the numbers essentially, of course, changed based on that. So the, the additive system was not being used. This Indian numeral system was the first featuring the combination of ciphering, position notation, zero, and a decimal plate, the decimal base. So then once this, this whole thing happened, this Indian numeral system, it was the first featuring all of these, uh, the combination of ciphering. I'm not sure what that is. You might want to look it up. And positional notation, so you have the positions, you have also the zero, and you have the decimal base. So uh, that means that the that means that the base of the system must be, of course, base 10, for example. And then when this system was adopted, essentially when this system was adopted by by uh, um, when this system was adopted and extended by medieval Arabs and Persians, they called it Al-Hisab Hindi. Al-Hisab Hindi, that means essentially Al is some, some something that is used in the Arabic language. Hisab means calculation. Hindi means, um, of course, Indian. So Indian arithmetic. So this system was adopted and extended by medieval Arabs and Persians 
and then the system was called the Al Hisab Hindi or Al Hisab Al Hindi. So essentially Indian arithmetic. These numerals were gradually adopted in Europe starting around the 10th century. So around the 10th century then the system was adopted in Europe, probably transmitted by Arab merchants, medieval and Renaissance European mathematicians generally recognized them as Indian in origin. However, a few influential, sor influential uh, sources credited them to the Arabs and they eventually came to be generally known as Arab numerals. Now, I don't know exactly, I mean, how much, how much contribution was made to the system by Arabs or Persians, but then uh, the system is originally thought to be an Indian system, but then again, there is there, there are people that think that this system was actually not invented by Indians, that the system was actually originated from China, and then from China came to India, and then from India was given over to, handed over to Persians and Arabs, and then the system was essentially uh, added to over time, basically, right? So, um, and then as you can see over here, um, in, according to some sources, this number system may have originated in Chinese Shang numerals 1200 BC. BC means essentially before Christ, that is, um, that is essentially 1200 years before Jesus Christ, that is essentially we have 2000 years here and 1200 years there, that's 3,200 uh, years ago in China, essentially. So, now it seems that this system, which was also, this was also a decimal positional numeral system. So, that, that it seems, meaning that according to these sources, this system already existed over 3,000 years ago in China, and it was already a decimal position system, which there is no way to essentially, uh, I mean, you have to, I mean, if it's important, you have to check different sources to see what was actually the case. Now, about, um, basically, the, about the positional notation, so, and then there is, there is basically the, the Hindu-Arabic system is designed for positional notation in a decimal system, in a more developed form, positional notation also uses a decimal marker. At first a march over the ones digit, but now more commonly a decimal point or a decimal comma, which separates the ones place, place from the tenth place, essentially. So the, so essentially the, so essentially the, the, the marker, the, the decimal point was 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 um, was originally a march over the ones digit, the ones place value, but then it changed to essentially a comma or a point that is today used as the decimal point. And then, as essentially as the system developed, now we have essentially the the we have a symbol for these digits recur. These digits recur, for example, when you add when you divide a one by a, by a three, for example. The result is a 0 0.333 and so on repeating. And so you would put a bar that, that is called these digits recur, that is, that is called ad infinitum. Um, must be Latin, I suppose. So now you put a bar over the, over the 3, which means that this digit repeats itself indefinitely. Now, in modern usage, this ladder symbol is usually a vinculum, a horizontal line placed over the repeating digits. That, 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 that sign over the repeating digits is called essentially a vinculum. And in this more developed form, the numeral system can symbolize any rational number using only 13 symbols. Rational number means essentially Rational number, as you know, is, is essentially a number can, that can be um, a number that any number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers, meaning, for example, as a ratio of one and three. Any essentially the, 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 the set of integers, essentially a set of numbers that is one, two, three, all the way up to infinity, 
negative one, negative two, negative three, all the way up to negative infinity, and then there is zero. That's the uh, that's the, the integer uh, number set, right? Now, any number that can be re that can be essentially um, that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. For example, let's say. For example, let's say, um, for example, a three. A three is a rational number because it can be rep represented as a ratio of three and one. Three over one is the same thing as three, and both both essentially three and one are integers. Or, for example, the number zero point three repeating. This is the vinculum. So this number is also a rational number because it can be represented as a 1 over 3. If you take a 1 and divide it by 3, you would get a 0 0.333 repeating. So then this number over here is a rational number. But then, for example, the square root of 3, this is approximately equal to 1.7 and then you just, the digits just keep going. And this number cannot, you cannot represent it as a ratio of any two integers, which means that then the number essentially becomes a, an irrational number, right? Now, now, what is important here is that now in this more developed form, the, the Hindi numeral system, it can be used to symbolize any rational number, rational number being what I just said, explained using only 13 symbols the 13 symbols are the 10 digits so you have 0 1 2 3 all the way up to 9 you have the decimal marker which is the decimal point the vinculum that that is the mark that you put over the repeating digits and a prepended minus sign to indicate a negative number so essentially a negative sign you can put before the number on the left hand side of the number just to 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 show that the number is a is a negative number okay and then basically this part over here talks about the fact that essentially in this system the numbers uh, are are basically are written and read from left to right and there is always basically you have essentially a number for example in this system four five six seven for example three two so the number is of course is is written from here all the way up to from from left to right essentially and the the digit at the, the essentially the rightmost digit is the least significant digit or figure and the digit on the left hand side meaning the leftmost digit right this one this is the most significant digit Meaning that essentially this is the least. This over here is the. This over here is the least significant. This is the least significant figure or, or basically or digit. And this digit over here is the most significant digit basically right significant meaning that significant essentially meaning that basically that this is the the ones place value so this two represents only essentially two times one but then this is the this is essentially the the one ten hundred thousand hundred thousand uh excuse me this is the this is the thousand, this is ten thousand, this is hundred thousand, right? This is the hundred thousand place value, this is the ones place value. So that means that this four represents essentially a four times a hundred thousand, which means a four hundred thousand. So so then that the digit on the, the leftmost digit is the most significant figure, the digit on the right, the rightmost digit is the least significant figure, right? Now the symbols that are used in the in the um, in the in the in the Indo-Arabic numeral system. 
So various symbol sets are used to represent numbers in the in the Hindu Arabic numeral system, most of which developed from Brahmi numerals. And um, so the symbols used to represent the system have split into various typographical variants since the Middle Ages, arranged in three main groups. So you have the widespread, the, the widespread Western Arabic numerals. So these are essentially the 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 Western the Western Arabic numerals are exactly these over here zero one two three four five all the way up to nine. Then you have basically the the Arabic Indic or Eastern Arabic numerals. These are essentially these ones over here. This call this row and this row and this row meaning essentially the Eastern Arabic numeral which essentially look alike but then essentially in you they, they can be used in the arabic language in persian in dari in pashto in urdu and so on and so forth and then you have the indian numerals in use with scripts of brahmic family in india and southeast asia each of the roughly dozen major scripts of india has its has its own numeral glyphs as one will note when pursuing Unicode character charts. So then these are these Indian numerals are essentially the ones over here. So there is the Brahmi, for example, there is Devanagari, which is used, for example, for the Sanskrit language, for the Hindi language, there is Tamil, there is, um, I don't know what this language is, there is, um, for example, Gujarati, there is, um, Telugu, there is Kanara, and so on and so forth. So they all have their own, essentially, glyphs and everything related to themselves. But they are descendants of the Brahmic, essentially, of the Brahmic numerals, or essentially descendants of the Brahmic uh, numerals, basically. Now, if you wish to continue with the same article, then you can read about the predecessors of the of the of the Hindu uh, Arabic numerals, you can read about their de develop de de development, medieval Islamic world, and then there is the adoption in Europe, for example, and then you have the adoption in East Asia and spread of the Western Arabic variants and so on and so forth. So you can you can read about their history a little bit. But uh, this much is enough for our discussion right now, which, I mean, as, as long as we know essentially what this uh, numeral system is and, and essentially where it comes from, that's more than enough for us for now. So hopefully you like this video and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.